Hello and welcome to this tutorial on uh, sliding panels in which we are uh, using images uh, in conjunction with these uh, different panels. This is what we did with the basic tutorial, if you remember. We had a number of panels which were arranged side by side, which we then tilted as one unit. We swapped their positions and we tilted back. That was the basic of it. But this is what we want to do now. When we add images, we want to start out with an image. We want to rotate it or tilt it. Have its panels move while keeping the same perspective. Fade away to become another image. And tilt back. Now the question becomes, how do we do that? Well, first off, let's start off by getting our, our images. And let's change their size to match that of the panels. Now, uh, we want to start matching things so that they work with the panels. We're going to rotate the images at the same location that we're rotating each of the panels. Now this indicates the center of the screen, and this is where the uh, ro uh, rotation point is. As you remember from the um, previous tutorial, our equation then is the rotation point, or the rotation center, is equal to the pan, or effective pan, divided by the value of zoom. In this case, our zoom is going to be 80%, or the decimal version, which we're going to actually use in the equation, of 0 0.8. Now, our effective pan is calculated by this. It's the pan location of the rotation point minus the pan value of the layer itself. The result is going to be our effective pan. In the case of the default for the image, that is going to be a value of minus 25. Now, let's, uh, before we get started, let's find out where the images are going to end. Okay, this top image is going to end at 3, so we're going to set this to 3. We're going to add two keyframes. Our rotation center is going to be minus 25, and we're going to keep that same rotation center until we get to keyframe 3. We're going to have a starting point of 0. And that's going to stay the same until we get to this point. But at this point, we're going to start a rotation of 45. And we're going to end up with rotation at this point of 45. And we're going to maintain that rotation right until the end. But notice the location of this panel. It is now at plus 30, whereas before it was minus 30. So a distance of 30 plus a distance of 30 gives me a rotation, or it gives me a travel distance of 60. Now, at 60, that means my rotation center is going to be, uh, it's going to be calculated as the pan, is, the effective pan is going to be minus 20, minus 60, so that gives me a value of minus 80 for a pan. Now I'm going to divide that by a zoom of 0 0.8, the decimal value of 80%, that's going to be, give me a rotation center of minus 100. Now, the other thing I need to do is, since I'm going to end this, uh, the visual of this layer, I'm going to have to lock this at 100% zoom here and make it zero here so it fades away as it disappears. Now, this next one, the value um, that we have to worry about for starting, the, all the motion starts at 2, so I'm going to set this at 2. So there's no reason to have it around until then. So let's set the keyframe to 2. Then I'm going to add 3 keyframes, and that's going to go to all the 2. It's going to go 3, 4, 5, and I'm going to end at 6. Okay, now, since the initial image traveled a distance of 60, I'm going to have to put this at minus 60. 
Likewise, I'm going to have to set the tilt at 45. Now, my rotation center is going to be minus 20, which is the value of this, minus a minus 60, which gives me a positive 40, and I'm going to divide that by 0 0.8. That gives me a rotation center of 50. Now, I'm going to keep this rotation center well, at this point, actually, I'm going to set this to 0. And at 0, I'm going to have a rotation center of minus 25. And I'm going to keep my tilt to, at 45 here. But uh, I'm going to keep my rotation center all the way to 4 and my zoom is going to be zero, or my uh, tilt is going to be zero. So, I'm going to start out at minus 60. I'm going to end at, 50, at zero. My tilt is going to stay the same until I get to keyframe three, and then the tilt is going to go to zero. So, when I end up with it, See that the image tilts with the layers. It's going to move and fade away, leaving the next image behind. And then I'm going to tilt back. Now I have all of the keyframes that I need for each of the different layers. And all I need to do now is to only change, once I've copied them over to the uh, panels, is just change the keyframes that I need to change. So let's duplicate these three times. Doing this uh, work up front saves me a bit of work later on. Okay, let's now move them to each of the other panels. Let's shut the other panels off and just deal with the ones we're going to deal with it, uh, for now. We've already dealt with this one. Let's make it cover both images. Now, let's unmask this. Now, this is going to travel a distance of minus 60. See, it's going to start out at plus, 60, or plus 30, and it's going to end up at minus 30. That's a total distance of minus 60. So this is going to be minus 60. And our rotation center for minus 60 is minus 20 minus a minus 60, which gives me a positive 40. We're going to divide that by 0.8, and we get a rotation center of 50. We go to the next layer, and it's going to travel, or it's going to start out, and not at minus 60, but at a 60. And a rotation center in that case is going to be minus 20 minus 60 is equal to minus 80. We divide a minus 80 by 0.8, and we get a minus 100. That's all we got to do. We mask this, and let's check it out. Both images, or both panels, rotate together. They swap positions and fade from one image to the next, and rotate back. Now let's go to panel B and do the same thing, as appropriate for it. Now, panel B is going to be traveling from a distance of minus 10 to plus 10. So that gives me a distance traveled of 20. Okay, with a minus 20, I mean with a 20, we now have a we've got to calculate the rotation center, and that's going to be minus 20, minus 20, all quantity all over 0 0.8, so that's minus 40 over 0 0.8, which gives me a minus 50. Okay, let's go to this one. If we're going to do a plus 20 on that one, this one's going to be a minus 20. And for a minus 20, it's a minus 20 minus 
a minus 20. That gives me 0. 0 divided by 0 0.8 gives me 0. Let's mask these. See what it looks like. Looks good. Okay, let's turn off the markers. Now we don't need them, not really. Let's turn these on. And this panel, yellow panel, is going to go from a plus 10 to a minus 10. So the total distance traveled is going to be minus 20. And a minus 20 minus a minus 20. The minus 20 is going to be for the rotation point, minus the minus 20. That's going to give me 0, just like we just calculated. And this one here, so we're going from minus 20. This is going to be a positive number, 20. And 20 minus 20 divided by 0 0.08 is minus 40 divided by 0 0.8, which gives me a minus 50. mass this up and that looks like what we're looking for there you go and that concludes this presentation thanks for watching have a good day